Mr. Speaker, we are obligated more than any time and any time before now. We are obligated to go now, 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 and now prevent the reoccurrence of this in any form or manner. It goes without saying to say that whatever they did on Saturday was pure, pure shambles. How could they have recruited anybody and get qualified people under that circumstance? I will add, most respectfully, Mr. Speaker, that the exercise of Saturday regrettably be cancelled. Let them cancel it fresh and then institute a system or a systemic approach to recruitment in this country. Be it, this is done in private sector. It's done in private sector. Why should it be difficult? If it's to argue for minimum wage, they will know how to do it now. If it's to ask for to embark on industrial, industrial uh, protest, they know how to carry them. They know how to hold governments down. But to conduct really simple recruitment, lives have been lost. And this is the sad reflection. Nobody values life in Nigeria. You see, banner lines, 30, 30 people died on Abuja local road. People shrugged their shoulders. In Lokota, they died. In Abuja, they died. Nobody values the sanctity of life in this country, and it is regrettable. We're slipping into the days of Thomas Hobbes, where the society is described as short, nasty, and brutish. We have, we're sitting on cinder box. If we don't quickly, in turnaround time, quick turnaround time, Mr. Speaker, address the situation that will let 500,000 people be roaming the streets, and then we don't get them good jobs or good situation where they're taking up, we are sitting on a cinder box. After a debate on the motion, the House of Representatives directed the Minister of Interior and the Controller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service to appear before its Committee on Interior. The motion is hereby referred to the House Committees on Interior, Public Service Matters, Justice, Labor and uh, Productivity for Further Legislative Action. The mood was not any different on the floor of the Senate. The senators also condemned the recruitment exercise and appealed to the executive to come up with how to tackle unemployment in the country. Somehow, all of us, across every party in the political divide, must put our heads together to find a solution to this draconian level of unemployment for our young people. If we don't, it's a matter of time. What happened in Bulgaria, what happened in the Czech Republic, what happened most recently through the Arab Spring on the African continent will also happen in Nigeria. The young people of Nigeria are angry. God forbid, but the revolution is the only solution to bad government. And what we are seeing is the evidence. What we have seen in Nigeria is that, in fact, our people should begin now to put fire to the feet of their leaders. For me, the tragedy of yesterday is, goes beyond the issue of the Minister of Interior. It goes, in my opinion, beyond the issue of the Controller General of Immigration. The fact is that, how did we arrive at that situation? Mr. President, I recall in, in, in 1983, the immigration services were in Amadi Bele University to recruit staff. And they were able to recruit few because people were not interested in the job. Mr. President, 30 years down the line, you could see the multitude of unemployed youth that throng the stadiums across the country. While the death of these young Nigerians has generated heated debates both within and outside the country, many Nigerians are watching to see if the words of these lawmakers will match their actions towards ensuring more jobs for the youths. Well, I'm sure you know that the president has canceled the recruitment exercise and families of those who died are to get three slots for automatic employment. We spoke with some Nigerians on their reactions to this development. I want to thank, you, thank uh, Mr. President for his uh, timely intervention. But the fact is that this, uh, the action is not final solution to what happened. 
because the fact is that it's compensating the family of those people who lost their life. But those people have gone, have gone. What my own opinion is that what are the measures they will take to avert such happening in future? Because I believe we had such a crowd in in a place because the, the, the because of that year's level of unemployment. Then even those people are working, there is no job satisfaction. But the fact is that they should put in so many things in place so that we will not have such a we not have the recurrence in future by providing employment and those people on the job, they should have job satisfaction. Because if you take statistics of those people who went to that place, there are many of them that are working. But they are not satisfied with their job. That is the more reason why they still go there. I thank the president the way he behaves. Eh? That he gives the three slaughter for the people that lost their life. But in the case that this family that I died is only one person that is representing her. What would they do? How can they get uh, one or two from, or three from that family? If this happened, that that person is the only graduate in that family. If our government will respect their citizens and look for a way they can help people, things will not be like this. It's this man this thing after death. How many graduates are running about the street on a daily basis? No provision, nothing whatsoever. So giving three slots on this thing, me, I don't regard it as anything. Because they should have done something before the station get to that state. The planning was very, very poor. It's what is happening in Nigeria here, whereby you call our people. At the end of the day, you will not give them job. In short, the whole thing is total deceit. Because me as a citizen, to watch what happened that day is a total disgrace. And uh, we call on government, especially the federal government, to see what they can do to alleviate the suffering of the candidates or the job seekers that died that day and those that injured in that process. Now, these were not the only matters that occurred in the National Assembly. Here's a roundup of the other issues the legislators considered during the week. In the course of the week, the House of Representatives mandated its Committee on Public Account to probe the alleged reckless spending of over 10 billion naira by the Minister of Petroleum Resources, Daisyani Alice Madweke, for an air charter service. This resolution followed a motion by a lawmaker, Babatunde Adejare. I wear that based on the reliable evidence, the Honorable Minister of Petroleum Resources, Mrs. Daisyani Alice Madweke, has been alleged to commit the sum of 500,000 euros. 130 million naira monthly to maintain the aircraft. This is two years. The minister has committed at least 3.12 billion in maintaining the private jet, which is used solely for personal needs and those of our immediate family, which is an appalling half. Also aware that there are strong indications that the above expenditure is only a tip of the iceberg, as several other billions of naira have been allegedly wasted on flying the jet all over the world, obviously for the leisure of the Honorable Minister and our immediate family on trips that were of no benefit to the country. Further aware that this colossal waste is currently estimated at 10 billion naira, which includes the payment of allowances to the crew for the trips, anger parking and rent based on the lease agreement. Concerned that an official of government could be bankrolling this way in the face of ever dwindling public resources, which amounts to a misplacement of priority, impudence, and breach of public trust, an action that offends the Fiscal Responsibility Act and all other laws of fiscal discipline. Worried that a private investigation into the matter reveals that the Honorable Minister is financing the lease of the aircraft in public. The House has also directed the Committee on Public Accounts to conclude the investigative hearing within two weeks and report back to the rest of the House. The House of Representatives also mandated its Committee on Natural Gas to investigate the non remittance of funds to the Federation account by the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas, Bunny, from 2004 till date. A motion moved by a lawmaker, Aminu Suleiman, says the action of the agency is in clear violation of the 1999 Constitution. Aware that the non-remittance of the funds 
accrue, accruing to NLNG from 2004 till date has adversely affected the federation account to the detriment of the federal, state, and local government across the country. Concerned that the unpatriotic action of those in charge of the NLNG from 2004 till date has resulted in loss of huge revenue that ought to have been shared by all tiers of government from the Federation account for both recurrent and capital development. Concerned that the no remittance of the funds that accrued to the NLNG to the Federation account from 2004 till date has badly affected all critical sectors of the Nigerian economy and constitute an economic crime. Resolve, Mr. Speaker, to urge this Honorable House to empower the House Committee on Gas to investigate the no remittance of funds from 2004 to date and to make appropriate recommendation and to ask that the committee should report this back to the House within the next three weeks. Concerned about the increase in the number of Nigerian students that are killed abroad, the House of Representatives mandated a joint committee to conduct a public hearing on the matter and report back to the House in two months. The chairman of the House Committee on Diaspora, Abiket Dabri Erewa, who raised the motion, said Nigerian students are being killed in different parts of the world and thus they have become an endangered species. It was a motion that sparked an intense debate. The House notes the alarming increase in the number of Nigerian students being murdered abroad, worry that our students in search of education abroad have become endangered species. In Ghana, four Nigerian students have been killed in mysterious circumstances in the last few months. Further disturbed that just two weeks ago, Mr. Godwin Ayogu, a 300-level social science student of University of Cape Coast, Ghana, was brutally killed on the 20th of February and his lifeless body was found on campus. And in Malaysia, Malaysian police killed one Tunde Adelabu from Ekiti State, a student of La Gengia University in Malaysia. About 18 Nigerian Malaysian students are currently in danger in Malaysia with no intervention whatsoever so far. Further note that on March 4th, a 17-year-old Nigerian student, Forrest Sampson, was stabbed multiple times and burned to death by an unknown group of Russians. Still disturbed that just two weeks ago in Dubai, Toba Falode, 19-year-old son of popular sportscaster Aisha Falode, died in mysterious circumstances. He was a student of SA Institute in Dubai. The motion was passed unanimously, and the House has also urged embassies in Ghana, Malaysia, Russia, the UAE, and South Africa to ensure all the cases are thoroughly investigated. Meanwhile, the Senate has passed into law a bill that prescribes a five-year jail term for human traffickers. The decision was taken after the Senate considered the report of its Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters on the amendment of the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Act. The amendment also prescribed a million naira fine for human trafficking offenders. A Deputy Senate President, Senator Ike Kweirmadu, who presided, expressed dissatisfaction with the passage of the bill, describing it as a good development. This is uh, indeed a very remarkable bill and a piece of uh, legislation. We believe that those whose responsibility will be to enforce, apply this law, we do that diligently to ensure that our labor will not be in vain. Will not be in vain. Well, that is just a look at the highlights of some of the issues your representatives considered during the week. Now, we're still expecting them to continue their work on crucial bills such as the Petroleum Industry Bill and the Pension Reform Bill. If you can get across to your representatives, please do so and help ensure these bills are passed as soon as possible. As usual, share your thoughts with us. I look forward to your mails and your tweets. Till then, I'm Lan Ray Lassisi. Bye.